Welcome to the Story Fulfilled Podcast, where we deep dive into how each character and story in the Bible come together to fulfill the story of God. I'm Jay. I'm Fletcher. And today's story is about Manoah. The man Noah. N- n- no. I don't know. It's spelled like it's just Ma and like Noah, like Noah's Ark Noah. Right. Ma. Manoah. Manoah. Manoah guy. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like, like Patois. Uh, pa- yeah. Manoah guy. <laughs> Maybe he was Patois. Who knows? I, I think he wasn't. Oh. Well, I know exactly actually where what town we, he was from. We're going to get to that, I guess. We're going to uncover... <laughs> It wasn't Jamaica or downtown Toronto. Neither. Uh, no. So no. Probably not Patois. No. No. <laughs> if you want to find out for yourself, though, you can look it up. Uh, it's in the Book of Judges. And uh, we that is our encouragement at all times. Yeah. When Whenever we don't rely only on what we say. Because you might be led to believe that Manoah was Pat- Patois. That he spoke Patois and he was Jamaican. Um if you want to get the full story for yourself, look it up in the Bible. Today's story happens in the book yeah. of Judges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read the story. Like, yeah, we're we're not a perfect storyteller. We don't always get it 100% right. So get in there. Get get reading and, and find out for yourself what these stories are about. That's they're, right. They're pretty cool. That's right. Uh, so we're picking up where we left off. And last week we talked about Joshua, whose name is the same as Jesus, really. Like it's Yeshua. Mm-hmm. And Jesus was Yeshua, but then the Greek translation was Jesus. And so we talked about Joshua and we, we looked at the unfolding of the Hebrews and how they were about to take the the promised land. Mm -hmm. And the commander of the Lord's armies appears with a sword drawn. And and, and Joshua immediately, because they're about to take a a city. About to go to war. Yeah. He's like, whose side are you on? And the guy says, neither, neither, I'm on the Lord's side. And he gives instructions on how they are to take the city of Jericho. And if you read that, you'll see that it did not involve the sword. Mm -hmm. It involved a marching band and a loud blow of the trumpet and some walking. (laughs) A lot of walking. A lot of walking, yeah. Seven seven days, seven times around, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, and so in the book of Joshua, it it explains um, the conquest of Canaan, how Joshua and the Hebrews captured the land uh, and the cities, and they established themselves there just as it was promised to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And after the time of Joshua came the time of the judges. Uh, And so instead of a united leadership like uh, Moses or Joshua, uh, there was a time when there was there was no leader. There was no king. uh, And actually, a couple of times throughout the book, it says that there was no king in those days. There was no king in the land and everybody did what was right in their own eyes. Mm. And I mean, we've we like every time I hear that phrase, I'm like, oh, right. Yes. If there's no king. In my life, I'm going to do what's right in my eyes, and it's, I'm going to get it wrong each and every time. And, and he, the thing is, there was, there was supposed to be a recognition of the one true king in how they were living. And they had been given instructions and in how to do that. All, all of, uh, well, after, after they're brought out of Egypt, the rest of the book of Exodus, all of Leviticus is, hey, this is how you live. This is how you honor God as king, and this is how you live. If you do this, it will be well for you. Mm. And we notice, like, because they had that. They had all the instruction, all the law, and they didn't do it. They they refused to place God on his rightful seat on the throne. And because of that, things just didn't go well for them. And it, and it says uh, throughout the land, it says, or throughout the book, it, it says that, you know, they... They recognized what they were doing was wrong. They turned to God. He appointed a judge, and they were brought out of that difficult situation. And then they threw it all away again. Yeah. They and did evil in the did sight evil. of the Lord yeah. over and over, over and over again. And over and over again. And, um, and because of that, what we read is that uh, uh, like foreign nations and other 
um, Tribe, tribes yeah, yeah. attacked them and they were and even conquered them at times. Mm-hmm. We see stories of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Amalekites, and the Philistines, and this just kind of ongoing uh, struggle with other nations mm-hmm. because they refused to be obedient to what God had put before them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so during the time of the judges, uh, we read God anoints regional leaders who solve the problems that do arise and, and help them get through that. And um, when we think of judges, we often, like we think of the robe. And the ro- the yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but they were just leaders. It, judges was another name for leaders. And, and these people came from many different backgrounds. There were political backgrounds. There were judicial uh, backgrounds, like but they Deborah, were right. I think Deborah yeah. was an actual judge right. who sat by a tree and telling telling people what to do. <laughs> right, uh, and prophets, and there yeah. were some who were like military ish leaders. None of those things were the qualifications for it. It was God's anointing that mm-hmm. was the qualification for being a judge, which brings us to where we are today. The story of uh, Manoah. The story of, of Mano- Manoah. Manoah guy. Matt Manoa. Manoa. Manoa guy. That's right. <laughs> and so, uh, right, like Jay said, after this conquest, the people went into the land, right? God God granted them the land. They went and they conquered. And each of the 12 tribes kind of settled different regions in Israel. And so mm-hmm. you can actually look on, on a map uh, of where all the tribes settled. For example, you see the tribe of Judah settled in the south, the south of Israel. Uh, the tribe of Benjamin was in the middle, kind of holding uh, Jerusalem and Jericho. Uh, there was another tribe, two tribes in the north, Asher and Naphtali. They, they held like the Sea of Galilee area mm-hmm. up in the north. You can look it up. There's, there's it's usually, 11 of them. Usually in the back of your Bible. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, there's the usually well. uh, um, a map with the 12 tribes. There you go. So yep. if you don't have Google and you have a Bible, you're set. Right. If you don't have a Bible, get one and you still have Google. Anyway. That's right. The only tribe that didn't get uh, a plot of land specifically were the Levites. Right. Uh, they had these like uh, Levite cities, but instead of a, a, of the land as a gift, their gift was to actually work in the tabernacle and be priests of God. And right. so the whole country is laid out, and the Levites are to be the priests. Yeah, and and you might say, well, then how were there twelve regions then? And, and that's because there were two. There were half tribes. Mm-hmm. There were the two half tribes that made up for the Levites. Not having yeah. uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, and right? Manasseh, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Who were um, Joseph's. That Joseph's was. So yeah. You heard the story of Joseph talking about he had two sons and they became tribes. And so mm-hmm. it's all laid out. They all have this land. And that's the thing that was promised to Abraham. It was pro- pro- promised to Isaac. It was promised to Jacob. And now they actually have it. And yeah. they conquered the land with Joshua. The problem is the land came with certain requirements. And that was to follow the law that yeah. God had laid out for the people. Which wasn't like. You know, we look back on it and we look at Leviticus and we joke with, we joke with Pastor Jen because it's her favorite book. <laughs> and, uh, and we're like, it's, it's just like, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. But the, the heart of it was that it was actually, it wasn't impossible. It was actually simple. Trust in God. Mm-hmm. Trust God. Allow him to provide, allow him to lead, allow him to guide. And, and you're fine mm-hmm. because he's God. <laughs> like, and exactly. and he's shown his miraculous ways up until this point in so many things. Uh, it's actually simple. And they decided, yeah. no, we don't want to do things the easy way. Yeah, we want to do it our way. Our way. Our, exactly. And, well, Jesus sums it up nicely. He says, the law and the prophets can be summed up. Love God and love others. Right. And I think in, in Micah, he says, what, what else does God command us but to do justice and right. to love mercy? And so right. it's like, all you got to do is be good to each other. Be decent people. And the land will be yours. Follow, follow me, and the land will be yours. Yeah. And they don't. They say, I'm going to do what I want, and they ended up doing evil things. And so right. this story takes place um, in a town called Zora, uh, and it's in a region of Dan, one of the tribes, and it's about 23 kilometers west of Jerusalem. What I find so cool is if you like do any sort of um, looking at like pictures, there's people that stand on mountains and say, Here's this region, and then they turn around. There's that region. Right. It's such a small region in the world <laughs> yeah. that it's like you can look out and point at yeah. all the different. Yeah, region. that's cool. Watching like uh, watching documentaries, people just point out. Oh, this yeah. is this region. Here's that city. Here's that city. It's a really small region. So 23 kilometers. You know, I can barely get 
you know, to Toronto. Well, <laughs> which you is can't. The close, I can't <laughs> yeah, even get a, to Toronto. I can get yeah. to like Aurelia. Yeah. Which is, anyway, people don't know where that is necessarily. That's, anyway, yeah. I can get to it close to a next town, barely. Canada right. is pretty big. Anyway, uh, so this timeline wise, this story takes place uh, in the late Bronze Age, early Iron Age, around the 1100s BC, like we said, during the time of the judges. Mm-hmm. And in a specifically a time when the Philistines uh, had conquered Israel, or at least this region, for about 40 years. Right. And so clearly they had done evil in the sight of the Lord and uh, the enemies of Israel had conquered them and were in charge. Yeah. And they weren't nice to the Israelites. They were nope. uh, brutal masters. And you can read through the book of Judges how they treated the people. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, the story takes place in a town called Zora, uh, Zora uh, with a man named Manoah. Uh, and he's a Danite. And uh, he had no kids, no children. And his wife couldn't have kids. She was barren. Hmm. I've heard that before all the time seems like god <laughs> likes to use people who yeah have, it's almost like that's a good sign right <laughs> that uh, if if god helps you to have children then he's going to do some cool things yeah yeah anyway so uh one day um, manoah's wife who's not named she she's out without him and uh, the angel of the lord mm. appears to her and tells her that she doesn't have children but soon she will become pregnant and have a son huh and then the angel says, you know, don't drink wine, don't drink any fermented drinks, and don't eat anything unclean, and don't cut your hair because he's to be a Nazarite before God. Huh. And if so, you're wondering... Nazarite, what's what that? What the heck's a Nazarite? It's not a Nazarene from Nazareth. Right. It's a Nazarite. And basically, it's this vow that uh, that Jewish people could take, and they could dedicate themselves to God. It's somebody who was, was consecrated, that was put aside for God's own use. Right. And so what they would do is they wouldn't eat unclean foods. They wouldn't touch dead bodies. They do all these specific things uh, to be super, super strict on the law. Yeah. And they wouldn't cut their hair as a sign of, of commitment and dedication to God. Yeah. And so the angel's like, your son. Fletcher and I couldn't do that. <laughs> no, we, we cut our hair. Too. Cut our hair. <laughs> is that why I lost all my strength? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Go read the story of Samson if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so this, this angel comes to the woman. He says, your child's to be a Nazarite before God. And he's going to be a Nazarite not just from an oath, but from the, the womb, womb until his death. Right. And so from now on, you're not going to be able to drink or, or do all these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says, because this, um, or he's going to do this uh, because this child will be the one to lead Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Wow. So he's got a big, a big, promise. big role, big promise yeah. on his life. And I guess, I don't know if we'll get into this later, but if I'm if I'm hearing that, I'm thinking, well, how long? Like, when? At what age? Because he's not going to do that out of the womb. So, like, what are we talking about here? How much longer do we have to yeah. be under the thumb of the Philistines? Yeah, exactly. So she's yeah. probably, she's got some expectations, yeah. doesn't know what's happening. And, of course, uh, if an angel of the Lord appears to you, what's the first thing you do? Oh, you go and tell Sorry, your spouse. Yeah. So, so she <laughs> runs and goes to tell her husband about this crazy thing that just happened, how a man of God, an angel of God came to her and told her all these things. Um, but she's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even ask him where he's from. Right. I didn't even get his name. I don't know what happened. And so Manoah gets on his knees basically and prays to God. And he says, dear God, I'm, may I ask this, you know, he asks all humbly, that God would send this man back to teach them how right. to raise the boy. What are we supposed to do? How, how are we supposed to do this? And so once again, the angel of the Lord appears to his wife while she was out alone in the field. And she runs to get Manoah. He's here. He's, he's back. Here, he's, he's back. Here. <laughs> um, and, and Manoah gets there. And he's like, are you the same guy that, that talked to my wife earlier? And he's like, yes, yes, I am. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, well, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to live out this uh, command that you've given us? Mm-hmm. And so the angel of the Lord repeats the same thing to Manoah. He's going to be a Nazarite. He's going to follow these certain laws from the womb to his death. And so Manoah's like, well, let me... Let me make you dinner. Let me stay for dinner. <laughs> yeah. Similar to the last time, except this time he says, I'm not eating your food. I can't yeah. eat your food. But if you offering, uh, if you offer a, a burnt offering to God, we'll, we'll accept that. Right. And so Manoah didn't, you know, I thought this was just some guy at first. Yeah. He didn't realize it was an angel of the Lord, but Manoah sets up this, this burnt offering. He kills a goat. He gets a grain offering. Uh, he gets it all ready. And then he asks the angel for his name. Uh, and the angel of the Lord replies, why are you asking my name? It's beyond, beyond understanding. understanding. And it's I, think wild. You, I think you see this a few times when, when the angel Lord gets asked his name. Mm. Why do you ask my name seeing that it is wonderful? Why do you ask right. my name when it's beyond understanding? So 
he doesn't get his name, but then he takes the, the grain offering and the goat and he offers it and burns it on an altar. And as the flames rise, the angel of the Lord ascends with the flames into heaven and disappears. It's amazing. So, and it says, this is the sign or this is the wonderful thing God did right. in front of them. Yeah. So Manoah and his wife, they basically immediately fall on their face realizing because Manoah is like, oh, this is just some guy delivering a message from God and then disappears in the flames yeah. uh, up into heaven. And they fall on their face and, 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 and worship. And they're like, man, we've seen the face of God. We are, we're done. We're toast. I wonder um, if, it, like, they're looking back on everything. They're like, oh, I should. it's like when you, when you watch a movie and there's, like, this insane plot twist at the end. And then it shows all these different flashbacks yeah. of everything that happened before that should have let you yeah. know that this is exactly what was going like to happen. So yeah, I yeah. see dead people. Um, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, oh, wow, oh, yeah. how did I not know? Yeah. And so they're a little scared because <laughs> yeah. obviously, um, if you've read the previous five book or f- yeah, five books of the Bible, seeing God is a dangerous, it's dangerous, thing. yeah. Um, and so looking at God directly and talking to Him and it is can be a dangerous thing. So yeah. they, they fall down and worship. They say, surely we're going to die. And then the wife's like, well, no, you know, he just gave us this promise. We just p- performed a sacrifice. Right. He's not going to kill us we, and give us these promises. So should we, we should be okay. Um, he wouldn't accept the sacrifice if he wanted us if dead, you, yeah, basically. Exactly. And so eventually the woman actually becomes pregnant and gives birth to a boy and calls him Samson. And God blessed him and the spirit is stirred up in him and and you can continue to read this is in in um judges, judges chapter yeah. 13 but if you continue to read you you hear all of what samson does and right he actually eventually delivers the people from yeah. the philistines and so this whole angel of the lord promise thing comes true and, and, and we happens we read about how well he did with his Nazarite vows vow. yeah <laughs> and... you, you can read that <laughs> um but even through well, you know if you know samson he had a, a very hard story um and he wasn't perfect and not even close to not being perfect. Not even close. But yet God used him yeah. to, uh, to accomplish what had been said over him before he was even born. Right. Uh, before he was in the womb by the angel of the Lord. Yeah. So what a story. I, I want to talk about what's going on in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we what's should, the point of this? <laughs> we should invite someone else into the conversation. Uh, we should, absolutely. <laughs> and here they come. There we go. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for listening to the Story Fulfilled podcast. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. If you have any comments, questions, or just want to reach out, feel free to email us at story at bfmc.org or follow us on Instagram at Story Fulfilled Podcast. Now, back to the episode. And we're back. We are back. And we have back. a very special guest this week. Pastor Jen Wagger is here on the show today. Thank you so much for coming on, Pastor Jen. Good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, or good night, depending on when people <laughs> good are afternoon, listening. Good afternoon, good evening, when and good night. You, where you are, yeah, and if I don't see you, good evening and good night. Right there, yeah. yeah, that's Truman a movie, show. I think. It's Truman good, Show. There great you. movie. <laughs> right, or, you know, you could listen in a car, you could listen in a train, you could listen in a house, or you could listen in the rain. That's true. There you go. Wherever that you have Wi-Fi, you can listen to the Story Fulfilled podcast. You can Story. download off Spotify even, so you don't even you need do, Wi-Fi. That's right. Do you need premium to You need premium to download off Spotify? You could YouTube download it, maybe. Yeah. Anywhere you want, you can listen to the Story Fulfilled podcast. And we have a very special guest, uh, Pastor Jen, and she is on. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do, why you're on the show, who you are to us, that kind of thing. Well, (laughs) I am the lead pastor at the Berry for Methodist Church, and I've been here for the last 12 years, but I've known Fletcher and his family probably for close to 20 plus years. Actually, I've known his mom. Fletcher's only 20 years old. Well, I've know? known his mom Six. since she was 14. She was good friends with my sister. Wowzers. And so I've known them forever. Ever. And uh, very good friends of their family. And, uh, then, and Jay. And Jay. then there's Jay, Jay. Who <laughs> is my trusty, uh, my trusty, trusty associate pastor here at the Barry for Methodist Church, who very willfully allows me to talk his ear <laughs> off and process through I, everything because I am a verbal processor. I put things on the chair in my office and Jen regularly moves those things to sit down. <laughs> she she took the uncomfortable chair that was in my office out and put 
something a little more comfortable in and <laughs> regularly sits in it and picks my brain. Actually, she doesn't go. pick my brain. She just talks. Yeah. And it's, then she's like, oh, that's right. That's it. Thank you. And leaves. I haven't said anything in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah I just sit there and keep working. I'm... But you know what's fun <laughs> is that whenever I go and people are like, how are things at the very first Methodist Church? I'm like, I so appreciate my associate pastor. He lets me come into his office, <laughs> move things off the chair, and just hear my thoughts. And he literally doesn't say anything. And then I get up and I leave. And... God is moving at our church because he's willfully letting me <laughs> talk his ear off. And and also what I love about working with Jay is he has this wonderful mind and heart for God. So he's like, well, have you thought about this or have we thought about this? And so in my uh, wanting just to go and get something done or do this, he's like, well, have you considered this? And it's like, yes. So I am... Uh, I am so thankful that the Lord has raised up the team here at the Barry for Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. And also, we are very willing to help our community experience Christ, which is w one of the reasons why we do the podcast, yeah. realizing that our community, yes, is local here in Barry, but also goes beyond into Toronto and the, and the GTA, but also all across Canada and around the world. Around so, the world. We have listeners in like several countries. Several yeah. countries around the world. I was looking at the stats the other day, and it's like, well, there was two views from the Philippines. Yeah. Like, well, hello, if you're listening to this in the Philippines right now or in any right. other country, but cool. Thanks for listening. That's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we have and and Pastor Jen on, and we're going to be talking about the story of Manoa, and she was very excited to, to talk right. about she Manoa. She got fired up. Fired up. This is why I knew, we knew that she was the right guest. <laughs> we, we asked her. Yeah. When, when we were thinking about guests for this portion, we're like, Manoa, pretty obscure character. Uh, who... Who would know a, a Jen? It's Jen. Yep. So <laughs> and she was excited. So she was excited. Yeah, we we were talking about this story of Manoa. It's a weird story. There's a a, a woman who meets an angel, and what are you going to say? No, something? no, you oh, go ahead. A, a woman meets an angel and says, "Oh, you're going to have a baby, mm -hmm. and he's going to do all these things, and and you got to treat him in a certain way, and he's going to take this vow." Uh, and be consecrated before God. Yeah. And then she comes back to her husband, and he's like, "What? What, what are you talking about?" That's and wild. so he's like, "I gotta, I gotta meet this guy." And so yeah. he goes out, and they, they meet the angel, and it turns out it's the angel of the Lord, and they mm. they offer a sacrifice, and then he disappears into the flames. Yeah. And then their worship, and and well, you heard the story, but yeah. we're here to talk about what's going on, um, and how does that actually impact the the story of God? Yeah. And now what Fletcher just said kind of tees up our, our question because we we got to do the question. Oh, we have, of course. Right. So I, that's why I thought you were oh, skipping no, ahead I, and I that's forgot. why I was going to kind of interject. But it actually tees it up forgot. perfectly well because what Manoa's wife told him was wild. And so the question today is what is the wildest thing that a family member has ever told you? Mm -hmm. It could be any family member. Uh, what is the wildest thing that they have ever told you? Well, probably the most wildest thing that someone ever told me about my family was uh, my sister, When after, well, I guess when she was hit by the car, she actually died and went to heaven. And wow. she, when she came back, she told stories of the people that she saw in heaven mm. that had gone before. Wow. And so that's probably the wildest uh, story that someone has ever told me. And yet it gives such great hope of, mm. you know, of what is yet to come yeah. and the faithfulness of God, right? When he yeah. says, you know, um, today you will be with me in paradise, that idea of when we close our eyes on this world, we will open them in the arms yeah. of Jesus. And it was like, mm. okay, I guess he's true. Mm. Uh, so that's probably the most wildest thing that yeah. I've ever been told, but gave mm -hmm. such peace and, yeah. and, uh, reaffirmed in my heart that yes there is a heaven after this yeah. world so that is what we are to to look forward to cool awesome one day and i'm trying to think of how long ago this was this was within the last 10 years so i'm 48 right now uh my sister told me that i was a twin <laughs> which uh, i'm not <laughs> <laughs> a twin. 
Uh, but it turns out in the womb, I was a twin and I had no idea. I didn't have, I had no idea that that was a part of my story. So my mother had had, uh, had been told she had a miscarriage and then told to come back a couple of weeks later. And when she came back, there was a heartbeat. And so that was me. You. So yeah, there, there was a twin and, uh. Yeah, Jacob and Esau, I won, I guess. <laughs> but did your mother confirm? She's confirmed it, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so it's one thing for your sister to yeah. say it, but let's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't, it. And now I didn't push in. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? Like, I guess it's just... Maybe it's just not something that comes up in, in conversation or in the... Yeah, but yeah. so 38 years old, I found out. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Nice. That's interesting. Uh I got to go with, well, maybe it, my wife telling me, no, I'm just kidding. I was going <laughs> to make a pregnancy joke, but uh, <laughs> I think I found out through Abby, apparently when I was young, like the house that I grew up in, there had been like a murder in it oh, and right. I didn't know about it. Yeah. And then Abby goes, oh, you know, that time that you went wherever and there was a murder in your house. And I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah, yeah. You guys had to leave because there was like detectives pulling up the floor or something. I'm like. I thought we were just renovating. And so I found out at like 24 years old that our house had been a murder house. At some Before point. you moved in. Before we moved in. Yeah. yeah. So bum, I got bum, told. Bum. Thanks for not telling me, mom. Dad. Yeah. I had no idea. I don't. This was a long time ago. So I was pretty young, but yeah, I had no idea. So that was yeah. weird to hear. That's... I thought it was just a cool trip to the hotel while they did floors. <laughs> Well, it was a cool trip. It was a cool trip, but <laughs> it wasn't for a good reason. <laughs> anyway. That's yeah, that's... Now, uh, I, I guess maybe you don't know, but like you had to move out while they did the investigation and they tore things up. Did they pay for all that? Like, do they... You ask my mom. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya, text we Jay. Know. We have to know all the details. <laughs> yeah, I had yeah. no idea. But apparently that that's happened. So wow. that's that's that was pretty crazy to find yeah. out. And I was just sitting there listening. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> the things we learn. The things we learn. We want to hear from you. Let us know what is the wildest thing that a family member has told you. All right, so let's let's dive into this story of uh, of Manoa. And the first thing that kind of came to mind is that well, Manoa and and his wife they were called to be parents. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when you think of, oh, God has a calling for my life and, and you see all these, you know, uh, cool stories in the, often we don't see the, the parents of the people who, who do cool stuff. Like it wasn't Abraham's dad that was called. Right. It was Abraham. It wasn't Moses' dad. It wasn't. And so with, with Manoah and his wife, we see God is calling the parents beforehand, mm -hmm. uh, to, to raise this child who will then deliver Israel. And so the kind of question and, and thing I want to talk about is like, how do you see, that impact in, in, in our lives mm. as Christians, it, are we called as parents in, in a way mm. um, mm -hmm. to raise our kids who then can be called by God as well? It's a great question. Uh, the book of Psalms says that behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, mm. the fruit of the womb, a reward, uh, like arrows in the hand of a warrior right, are the children of one's youth. There's mm -hmm. this idea that children are this wonderful blessing. Mm -hmm. And parents are actually told how to raise up their children, to raise them up in, in the ways of the Lord so that it will go well for their children. And so when we, you know, when we often think of parenting as something, it's what we do, but it's, we don't often think of it as a calling, right? right? And, and so this idea that, no, children are actually a blessing mm -hmm. from the Lord. And how many people do we know that have been unable to have children? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it helps to put into perspective a little bit that children really are this wonderful gift from the Lord mm -hmm. entrusted to us to, to care for them. And uh, several spots in scripture. So we have Hagar and Ishmael. We have Manoah and his wife and Samuel. We have Mary. We have Elizabeth who are all told beforehand you are going to have this child. So almost like, because we're also told that what you meditate on as you are carrying a child actually affects that child. The girl that just won uh, American Idol, mm -hmm. we're told that her mother was singing whilst you know she was carrying this baby. Right. And then when the baby, when the doctor went to check the baby, baby was actually humming mm -hmm. in the womb, <laughs> right? So I sometimes wonder if the Lord... Um, that we need to meditate on that from the Lord, the fact that this is a gift that we are carrying yeah. from him because the way we think will actually impact 
how that baby actually um, grows in the womb, what that baby is meditating on. Because we know that right from the point of conception, they are living and breathing and growing and they do take in their circumstances around them, right? So it is something to be mindful of that I think the Lord was often prepares us uh, as we carry that child to term of this is a gift. What are you meditating on? What are you pouring into this child right. even as you are carrying it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you when you mention that psalm, it's interesting. Um, what comes to mind is when, when it says that uh, children are like the uh, arrows in a skill, the hands of a skilled archer. Yeah. Um, I think of like where for our men's, breakfast we're we're going to uh, an archery range for our june gathering and guys will be using arrows and they're gonna get it wrong they're gonna miss they're gonna like some some people who are doing it for the very first time who think it it's gonna be easy they're gonna pull the arrow and they're like oh this isn't as easy as I thought it was. And it just reminds me of like the journey of parenthood mm. is is made up of practice and um and sometimes we miss the mark, uh, but we continue to hone those skills so that we can can get it right. Um, and so children are a gift in that way that we're learning how to raise them a- along the way as well. Um, yeah, so I just that imagery just came to mind mm. when 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 you mentioned that song. Mm-hmm. Well, and and I find it so interesting how often parenting and raising children comes up in the wisdom and in the law and in how people should live as as believers as israelites in the old testament but also as christians in the new testament but it's like in the law right in deuteronomy it's like in the shema when they're commanding what to do with israel it's like impress these laws upon your children raise them up uh in the way that they should go and it's like how how important and obvious in this story is the call it's like you're gonna have to raise these children in accordance with my law. Uh, raise these children to be followers of me right. speaking as god um because if you don't, how easy is it to stray uh, away? And you see how many godly people, you, if you look at the stories in the Bible, how many godly people didn't commit that to their children right. and their children were mm-hmm. led astray. What, next week we're talking about Samuel and, and there's a whole bad, bad parenting situation right, there. Right, you right. see with David, bad parenting situation is like, mm-hmm. how many stories do you see great godly people and then they're not emphasizing God necessarily in their children. And that leads to all sorts yeah. of problems. So it's, it's great advice to see with, with Manoah and his wife. It's like, God is like, your, your son is going to do these incredible things. Make sure he's staying with me. Yeah. And well, yep. it doesn't well, end up working out in this situation, but what is interesting about that passage is that the angel came to Manoah's wife and said, this is what you're to do. You're to raise him as a Nazarite. So watch what he eats, watch what he drinks, don't cut his hair. And that passage uh, about what a Nazarite was is from uh, Numbers chapter 6. But they were already told how to raise children. Mm. And, and Fletcher uh, said it right there. Um these commandments that I give you, so this is Deuteronomy 6, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames mm-hmm. of, your, of your houses and your gates. And he's very, like, that's Deuteronomy. And we know that Manoah was a follower of God because right. he immediately prays. So we know that he's a man of faith. But somewhere along the line, it's like he forgot how to raise up mm-hmm. his son, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. and yes, they probably had been waiting for a long time. And as any first-time parent, they're like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Right. Um, and so he did the right thing by asking mm-hmm. the Lord But it's interesting because the angel of the Lord doesn't change what he says. He says the exact same thing. And I'm thinking of Micah 6, 8, where um, he says, He has told you, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to do justice and and love love mercy mercy. and walk humbly. And, And so we are told so often people are like, well, how do I love and serve God? He's already revealed himself in mm-hmm. the scriptures. Mm-hmm. We just need to go and find it yeah. and, and yeah. walk that out in our life. So I found that very interesting that um, he doesn't repeat. 
um, he repeats fully, doesn't give a second revelation, a deeper revelation. He just repeats it fully, almost with the understanding of you already know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That, and we uh, that's we kind of talked about that as we were summarizing um even the the story of um the Israelites coming into the land and them having no king and but God's like no I've actually shown you how you are supposed to live mm-hmm. just do it just do <laughs> just it just do it I uh I like that that emphasis on the the command didn't change like yeah. the, his wife got a command and he asked for another like details detail and he's like no i i told you it yeah and i gave you the law already yeah. and so if we look back at that in, in our lives it's like um when we have to figure out well what does god what has god said we have how how many words did you say yesterday <laughs> oh yeah over seventy thousand. <laughs> seventy thousand pages <laughs> seventy thousand words whatever it was <laughs> i'm gonna have to edit that but seventy thousand <laughs> words of of details of how people have followed god yeah. throughout history yeah. and um, when you think of, of Jesus's summary of the law and the prophets, it's exactly what Jen just said. In the, it's love God and love others and to do justice and to love yeah. mercy. Like yeah. that's what it's summarized as. And it's just different people doing it at a different time and in different ways. Yeah. And, and when Manoah hears it again, raise your child as a godly man. Mm-hmm. That's what he hears. That's mm-hmm. what his wife heard. And that's what we just have to continue to do is raise mm-hmm. your, raise your children as yeah. godly people yeah and you know when i think about the story fulfilled podcast and looking at all these stories and how they fit into the overall story of christ um we know that manoah uh, followed god because he immediately he prays he doesn't doubt right right he doesn't doubt that the baby's going to come um it's but he it's almost like well no i need more so rather than than you know just stepping into what he already knew it's like no i need more and how often, you know, do we do the exact same thing? Just like you said, Fletcher, um, we want more rather than just following mm. what it is that the word of, of God says. And Jesus said, I didn't come to bring a new law. I actually came to fulfill yeah. the law. And it's like, well, no, there, there has to be something different rather than just believing in faith that all we need to do is it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from there is nothing else there is no well i have to do this much penance i have to no it's just we we really just need to dig into the word of god do what it says and and god will meet us there but it's Mm -hmm. like we are just like manoah i have often thrown rocks at manoah (laughs) and going you're you're so stupid. Why didn't you just listen to your wife? Right. Um, and yet I'm like, but Jen, how often have you said, God, could could you do it again? Could you reveal it right. differently? Yeah. Like, could you use different words maybe so I understand it better rather than like just trusting and walking in it? Because Hebrew says, uh, without faith, you cannot please right. God. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when we think about how does this all work together, I think Manoah is a picture of our own heart. Yeah. And because I'm like, maybe, you know, I'm always like, yay, Manoah's wife. <laughs> and I'm like, that's because you're more like Manoah mm-hmm. uh, than I am mm-hmm. like Manoah's uh, wife. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Holy cow. I get that. I feel that. And because, well, when you're, when you're saying that, it's like, okay, I want, I want proof that that's what you want. God, right. I want, okay, confirm this, please confirm that. And it's like, well, you've called us to do specific things and yeah. it's to love people and to love God. And, and like you said, to do justice and to love mercy. That's how you're supposed to step out. And, and the faith is trusting that if you're doing those things, then God is going to be there and the God yeah. is going to meet it. That the faith comes in is I've heard the command. Am, am I going to step out and actually mm. live that out? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you see Manoah, I, I can put right Manoah's shoes right on and say, yeah. okay, I am, I'm going to go back and ask again, and I'm going to go back and ask again. And you almost get an understanding of after Manoah asked for a sign, they worshiped and he was given a confirmation, but then the angel disappears in fire and he's like, whoa, yeah. I didn't realize who I was dealing yeah. with when I was trying to ask for, for more and for more and for more. Right. And so they ended up worship falling on their face and being like, okay, I've gotten a confirmation. Yeah. 
I'm really going to have to live this out and, and realize who I was dealing with when yeah. I was, when I was asking for these things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because even then, Manoa's wife steps in because he thinks he's going to die. Yeah. We're going to die. Right. We're, We're going to die. And she's like, buddy. <laughs> he just asked us. Right. Why would he have said? Because first of all, the angel of the Lord came and told her, you're going to have the yeah. son. She didn't die. Yeah. Like, why would he give you a message? This is what's going to happen. If he was going to kill you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so then the same thing happens again. And he's like, we're going to die. And she's like, no, we're, if, if we were going to die, he wouldn't have given us something to mm-hmm. do. Right. And it's like, oh, Lord. Right. He, it's, yeah. Manoah gets confused about who God is in this situation. He, he, mm-hmm. He's all about the fear of God. And, and, and his wife is like, no, he's, he's given us something. And so the, she gets the relationship aspect. He doesn't understand it yet. He, right. He's just thinking it's some guy. And then he realized, oh, God is scary. God is powerful. God right. is to be feared. Yes. And yet he has called them. So you fast forward to Isaiah, which, you know, um, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when you walk through or when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fires, you will not be burned. The Mm -hmm. flames will not set you aflame because I am the Lord your God. And, and it's like, no, I've given you something to do. Yeah. I'm not going to smite you just like, uh, you know, we fast forward even further to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they literally walked through the fires, but God was with them in the midst of this. Yeah. So even though, you know, yes, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, he's thinking of, of the passages that have come before that said, you can't see God and then you'll die. Yeah. Um, because he's missing out, as you said, on the relational aspect. But the fact that the mm-hmm. God is going to be with them in the midst of this tough time, he's not removing his spirit. He's actually saying, this is going to happen and just continue to walk with mm-hmm. me. And I think that's what the part is he's missing out mm-hmm. on is, yeah. is that relational aspect. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, Lord, yeah. forgive me for throwing rocks at Manoa mm-hmm. and help me just yeah. to acknowledge that and step in with faith. Yeah, and that's the promise that, that Paul gives us. He says, faithful is the one who calls you, and he yes. will do it. And mm-hmm. and those verses, uh, I believe, are, are speaking of even salvation and, and walking out that salvation. Faithful is the one who calls you, and he will do it. He will do the work in you. He will continue to empower you to do the things that he's called mm-hmm. you to do. There's uh, the parable of the talents, which is one of Jesus' parables. It's really cool, but it's it's kind of one of the understandings of it is God gives us a certain amount of, or the God gives us the talents and, and two of the men chose to do something with it and they were rewarded for, mm. for stepping out and doing with it. And the third man, he buries it basically out of fear that God right. was going to reap what he didn't. So God was this harsh, terrifying, or his master was this terrifying thing that would judge. And yet he was only judged because he didn't step out in faith and, and right. live out. And so Manoah is essentially this this third guy who, yeah. at this. He's like, oh, I'm going to die. I'm sorry. Put your face down in mm. the dirt and don't live it out. Whereas his wife is the other. T- yeah. You, you got to go be fruitful with those That's talents it. because, you know, don't treat God like this harsh master who's going to smite you at every corner. Right. Because he, that's not who he's calling us to be to him. He, he's yeah. calling us to use those talents and to go out and to step out in faith and not mm. just cower in fear of him at all times. Yeah, that's interesting. It's, it's, it's almost the parable is saying that God is not that person or that God is not that, that. God is not that mm-hmm. unless we make him mm-hmm. to be that. Unless we treat him that way. Yeah. 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 Which I found. Like when I, when I heard, I, I've, I've heard the parable of the talent several, and then I heard that understanding. I'm like, that is really cool. And that connects to God is calling us and that that's he's called us like you exactly like you said he's called us to do something and he doesn't act like that unless we treat him like that yeah, yeah. Um, which i find so cool is is he is unlimitedly uh, or ultimately gracious and and mm-hmm. faithful and mm-hmm. chases us down but if we treat him like he's none of those things yeah. he can be none of those yeah, things yeah, right yeah. but and in his graciousness he came again to Manoa. Mm-hmm. Like that's mm-hmm. yeah. right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you once and I'll tell you again mm-hmm. right. and I'll tell you again. Right. We, yeah. We see that throughout like, and, uh, and the fish vomited Jonah onto the shore and the word of the Lord 
came to Jonah a okay. second time, mm-hmm. right? Like we, that's God's right? patience and grace yeah. and mercy is just abounding, spewed all over the pages mm-hmm. of the Bible. Yeah. So if you're listening today, you might be thinking, oh, I'm like Manoah. And you might be like, well, just give that to the Lord yeah. mm-hmm. and just say, Lord, I don't want to be like Manoah. Would you help me to grow in my faith? Mm-hmm. Would you help me to trust you the first time? And Lord, thank you for showing up again and again for your faithfulness. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And instead of asking for more, go back and look at what he said the first time. And look and at then, what he said the first and, time. And go back and go back. <laughs> and that's what leads to a, a faithful living out is, yeah. is not yeah. asking for more, but looking back and stepping out and continuing. Psalm 119 says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By and, living according to God's word. Right. Mm-hmm. I have hidden your word in mm-hmm. my heart that, that I might not sin against, against God. Mm-hmm. And that's where it really starts. What did the word of God say? And because we start to live it out. And when that word has gotten in our heart, we start living it out and that changes us. So that's why we're saying like, he just needed to go back. What does he know? And then to live it out. So what is it that you know today that maybe you're not living out Mm. and you need some help living it out? Well, ask the Lord because he is indeed faithful, as Jay said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so, well, the final question, which we've kind of jumped around and (laughs) talked about already but is is how does this story come together to fulfill the story of god and i think we've we've absolutely covered that unless either of you have something to add but just the the idea that god is faithful to call you to -hmm. do something and he is faithful um to help you live that out like he like he called manoah and his wife and even though he was stubborn and didn't listen the first time he was faithful enough to come tell him a second time and uh is always there to to help you walk out whatever call uh, he's called you to do. Mm. That's the gospel. That's That's the the gospel. gospel. (laughs) Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor Jen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, We appreciate it. Hope to see you again on a a future episode sometime. Uh, Where, oh, you can do a shout out to, uh, well, your church and and, uh, your devos if you'd like to. Sure. So, hey, Barry from Methodist Church, uh, we're so glad that we get to be a part of the Story Fulfilled podcast, and every morning, uh, Monday through Friday, we meet together at 7 a.m. on Facebook Live for Morning Devos, where it's just a little bit of encouragement to encourage you throughout your day, uh, keeping your eyes focused on Jesus, uh, opening up your heart to Him, and just trusting Him, growing in your faith, and believing that uh, God loves you, Jesus is with you, and the Holy Spirit will guide you to help mm-hmm. your community experience Christ. So you are very much invited to come and join us every morning at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday. And you can find that on the Barry for Methodist YouTube or Facebook. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Bye for now. See you later.